There we go. Now we can talk about it. All this right. morning, this morning, one of my friends I went to college with, who I did a couple of shows with. Oh, trash truck. Gonna have to turn around. Jeez, that means we'll never get out of here. Anyway, a friend, uh, well, friend, acquaintance, whatever, co-worker, whatever you want to call him. Decent guy all around. Usually. Decent guy. Sean, Sean's pretty decent. He's all right guy. He's got his little fucking millennial fucking troubles. Anyway, he posted a thing about, he's a very anti-Trump, very anti-conservative kind of guy. And he posted, <clears throat> making America great. Sarcasm. Is, yeah, it's with sarcasm, saying bullshit when he's got cages and cages of children behind cages. <clears throat> now, I don't remember seeing that happening in this country. Yeah, I'd like to see the authenticity of that photograph and things. But I'll have to look into that after work. But uh, it kind of... It really runs me the wrong way of modern political activism. They're willing to pro promote their own agenda through lying about it. Manufacturing photographs to say, oh, this is happening. Well, in this particular case, it kind of looks like a manufactured photograph to me. Because in this country, we have child labor laws. Federal level child labor laws that the federal government has to rule by. You cannot keep a small child in a 5x5 five five little pen and not go to jail. Not in this country. If you find out about it, all hell breaks loose. If push comes to shove, an army visit is required. It gets to that level. And it's been on the books since 1910. The antitrust laws. The anti-monopoly laws, the SEC laws. You can thank all wonderful Teddy Roosevelt for being the original political activist in charge, because he was one back in the day, and he was Republican. All right, it was the Democrats who fought him to finale about certain changes, because it would have cost them money. But back to modern political activism. They would do whatever it takes, apparently, to stir the pot, bring up, uh, bring up emotions to run high, bring up a mob mentality in order to act out. And that's extremely dangerous. And that got its start with Lenin in Russia, the Russian Revolution, which culminated in the murder of a family who were more than happy to abdicate and turn over their rule over to a congress. They were quite happy to get away from all the shit. Instead, they were shot because of who they were, what they represented. Remember your history, folks? And then, <clears throat> with 75 years of totalitarian government under the socialist communist flag, which led to 100 million deaths in Russia, another 3 million Cambodia, because Cambodia tried the same thing. God knows how many people are dying in China every day that China don't talk about, because China controls the media controls the thought process of what you get to think about in China. Why? They don't want another mouth. They know how they got there and they're going to do whatever it takes to stay there. So political activism scares the shit out of them. Because they know how they started it. And this, this guy is buying into it. Hook, line, and sinker. And he doesn't need to. Yep. Anti-Trump this, anti-Trump that. He showed a uh, he showed a post with a Confederate flag saying this is racism. And then he showed a Nazi flag, this is hate. And then he showed a Trump hat, make America great again, underneath it. And he says this is bigotry. Really? Wearing a mega hat is not bigotry. That's in your face anti Democrat liberal policy. That's Americans being Americans. Like, I don't agree with you. Here's my hat. T come and take it from me. Kind of challenge. And you're walking right into it. This country is founded on the ideal that think whatever you want. Good, bad, black, white, orange, brown, doesn't matter. Think whatever you want. No one else has the right to take your thoughts away from you. No one else has the right to make you believe something you don't. 
You don't have the right to force that on other people. All men are created equal. Well, people go back to, what about the one-third law? Well, you know what? That was a compromise that was sorted out through blood, toil, sweat, and civil rights activism back when it was civil rights activism. If you weren't marching to Alabama in the 50s, if you weren't running from the goon squad in Mississippi in the 50s, you were not fighting for civil rights because they were there taking the challenge to the states that made these Jim Crow laws sacrosanct for over a hundred years, thanks to the Democrats. It was the Democrats that said, okay, you won the, won the Civil War, but we still got control of the state capitals. That's why you have all these Confederate flags. They were still showing where their loyalty really lied. And after Abraham Lincoln was shot and killed, his vice president was willing to go along with it because he made money. Money. Grant went along with it because he was just too fucking tired. Man had just got done seeing the Civil War happen, got Andrew Jackson out. Oh, no, Johnson, sorry. Correction, Johnson out. And he was embroiled in his own political problems because he could not handle it. So he gave the wrong people carte blanche on dealing with the Indian problem in the West. Borough Indian Affairs, that's where all that shit rolls up. Look into it and then just choke on the bile that comes in your throat about how government policy run rampant without any controls can fuck people over. That's why I'm very suspicious about, oh, let the government do this. Let the government do that. People talk about the Amazon's blankets. It's because they were bought cheap without any controls. No one knew what they were harboring. No one gave a shit. They just shipped out the old blankets and uh, people died. It's like, oh, oh well, fuck it. That was the mental attitude. Fuck it. Look at this guy. Human 